All right, so in this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to create an electrical kind of lightning effect. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> we're going to be seeing a new kind of emitter in this video. So, uh, the beam with, emitter. Absolutely, with some new attributes. So, Joel, why don't you go ahead and take it away? All right, so first thing, of course, is to create an emitter. So, add an emitter. Now, what we're going to do is come in here. Now, one thing I want to say, we're going to have two emitters, one on this pole. Two emitter actors. Two emitter actors. Okay. One on this pole and one on this pole, so that they can shoot between each other. And with beam emitters, we can set it up so that it shoots at an actor, which okay. is really cool, because we can say, this emitter, shoot at this emitter. This emitter, shoot at this emitter. So We, we could, in effect, end up with two beams. Yes, we could. Uh, actually, we will. So what we can do is come over here and take this emitter right here. Let's just duplicate him and move him over to here. Now, one thing we need to set up is the tags for these emitters. So if we come into the properties, go to the event, events tab, come over to tag, and we'll name this guy Spike1, one, this one on the left here. Come over to this one, and we'll name him Spike2, just so we have something to reference them by. They can be any names you want, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So if we come over to this emitter, come over to the emitter tab, under emitters, we'll add, and we're going to add a beam emitter. So press new. Now, nothing's going to show up yet. What we need to do is come down to the beam tab right here and set determine endpoint instead of velocity. We need to set this to actor so it shoots at an actor. Now, it's not going to shoot, well, right now it's going to shoot at the origin because we don't have any endpoints set up. So we haven't actually specified an actor for it to shoot at. That's exactly right. So if we come to beam endpoints, we can add different actors that we can actually come in and add multiple actors and what that allows us to do is specify different actors that we want to shoot at. That's cool. And it now will it shoot at all those actors at the same time? Well it's determined by setting the weight right here. So each of these can come in here. We have an actor tag, we have an offset, and we have a weight. So if this guy has full weight then it's going to constantly shoot at that guy. Okay so, so it has the, more the higher the weight the more often it's going to be shooting at that one Exactly. Actor. Okay. Um, let's empty these out. We only need one in our case, and this actor tag is going to be spike two. And check this out. Dink, it's now shooting towards that guy. Of course, we have this funky, weird-looking default texture. Yeah. And I don't like it. So if we come into our texture browser, and let's switch over to Epic Particles Package, and if we look all the way down here, we have some nice little lightning bolts that we can set. All we'll, right. We'll choose this guy right here. Okay. And let's come down to the Texture tab here, and set the texture to use this one. And look at that. We have a nice lightning bolt shooting at it. Looking pretty cool so far. So a few other things we need to set. In this case, we don't want max particles to be 10. We want it to be 1. That makes sense. So if we wait about 30 minutes, well, not really, just a few <laughs> seconds, it shoots out. Ah, still not what we want. We want it to be shooting and changing. So one thing we need to do is set the lifetime range to 0 0.1 so it changes constantly. So that's underneath time. Yeah, underneath time, right? So getting kind of ahead of myself. So now it is dying and rebirthing, but, well, it's not changing at all. Right. What we need to do is come up here, and with our beam emitter, we have three new tabs. Beam, beam branching, and beam noise. Now what we need to do is come down to beam noise, and look at all these cool settings. Oh, yeah. All these settings allow us to change the way how noisy this, this lightning bolt is. So if we come down to high frequency noise range, what this is going to allow us to do is basically set the distance that it can wave. Okay. Right now, since it's all set to zero, it's not going to have any variation. That's right. bad. So if we come into here, set max to 10, min to 10, so we're going to have a variation between negative 10 and 10. All right, cool. And we'll do the same for all um, three axes. I was about to say four axes. That's kind of impossible. <laughs> so come into here, and look at that. Ooh. Ooh that's some really crazy stuff that's going on really here. really jittery lightning. Maybe we want to come in here and change the frequency points down so there's not as many division points along our lightning bolt. Okay. So if we look at that, hey, now oh, that looks nice. pretty cool. Yeah, so that that's actually cool. kind of a lightning bolt effect going on.